Real Tree Farms. Real, real Tree. Real Tree Farms. Okay, buddy. Sounds good. Let me know. All right, I'll man. Be travel safe. Sweet. Sounds good. Appreciate it, buddy. There you go. Yep. All right, bye. Bye. There's a deer that showed up in here last night that ain't been in here all year. I call him Cactus Jack. Mm. He's a six year old and he literally looks like a pronghorn. stand he's in the elevate ultra right across from me i'm set up in the tethered saddle we're overlooking this big bottom we've got acorns falling all around us you can hear it it just sounds like rain uh, up on the ridge above us there's a big green field and then down below us there was an old green field that they've tilled up but this is a big acorn ridge between those two fields these deer have been filing down through this bottom, feeding on acorns, so uh, we got a little bit of yellow acorns right out here back behind us, but we're looking forward to seeing what comes through. They've been saying that these deer have been filing through here pretty much all day, so we're here in the morning. It's 6.58. We got started a little bit late this morning, uh, just getting things hung, getting things set up, had to put... Uh, two stands in this set for Ethan and I. This was a new set that they haven't, they haven't even hunted this this year. So we came in and hung a set up in here and hopefully we have some deer file through. I'm excited, what do you think? I'm excited. Looking forward to it. They aren't necessarily, they aren't, uh, we were driving in yesterday and we had a big old mature deer walk right out in front of the truck and uh, coming from the Midwest it's a little deceiving body wise like big mature deer out here body wise three quarter the size if not a little bit less than a big mature in Nebraska so it's funny these southern deer dude they're just like body wise they're so much smaller you know but it's fun we're gonna we're gonna stick a couple. We're, we're definitely gonna shoot some does. Um, they wanna take some does off this property and I think I have like 10 doe tags that came with my license. I'm gonna double check, but I'm pretty sure I have 10 doe tags. So um, we're gonna shoot a couple does if we can, but otherwise we're gonna shoot any big mature eight. We're gonna pass a couple of 10 pointers if they come in. There's a couple deer on this farm that they want to uh, give the pass. They think they're four and a half years old but there's several big old mature eights, mature nines that uh, we're gonna work on trying to kill. So we're set up, ready to rock, excited. I feel 
like a couple pumpkins in the tree. Getting ready for Halloween. Don't usually have to wear orange for bow season. But definitely during the open gun seasons makes sense. Gonna start packing up here. About 10.15. Gonna pack up and I believe Tyler's gonna come pick us up around 10.30, so start loading all this stuff out. So I'll just be glad it was a short-legged man to put them up because some of them guys come back and hang that Told stuff, you. they don't think about our legs. Oh, man. <laughs> I've been in some situations where I'm I jumping, man. I had to climb down. Steven had to climb back up there and move the stand around so I could get in the dirt. But We've already got a ladder stand set up with a hang on on the back side for filming. Be perfect. Where we hunted this morning was right down this big draw, another two, three hundred yards, and those deer came up down through that draw, worked up on the back side, and that's all big bedding back there. Well, you saying typically in this spot, they've been seeing these deer come from this big timber working up over this knob or from directly across from the stand working up over the knob coming to this top. So it should be an awesome spot for for this evening. Should we get some lunch? Yep. Time for lunch. Thirty-five minutes, I'd say. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Cool. We'll All see right. you guys soon. Bye. We're gonna shoot the bow a little bit because I haven't got a whole lot of time since setting it up to shoot it. Got 20, 30, 40 dialed, but I would like to put a sight tape on it. So we're gonna see uh, see how far we can step back out here and see if we can't start figuring out a sight tape. Just a little Directly bit. Directly in front of us, I feel like we're pretty close to his bed right Sure. Rubs everywhere, scrapes everywhere, just phenomenal. So I believe this is the first camera we put on this since we've touched. Uh, it's yeah, coming into him right here, but there's also tracks all over the road right there. That's what I was asking. There's got to be a... There's never just a randomness to where they're that, you know, there's yeah, there's some sort of wind he's in here. He's probably betting in that. I mean, that... Mm -hmm. Any opportunities that don't have near the crash in here to contend with, we did on that other All right. Getting ready for the evening hunt. We just rode the back of bikes in all the way from the lodge, like a mile and a half away. These things are awesome. They just... Everything about them, they're awesome. Get in here silent, they're fast, comfortable to ride, soak up the road. Yeah, I guarantee you those other guys haven't even gotten their harnesses uh, on. <laughs> no, we're ready to hunt. Everybody else is back at the trucks. <laughs> so anyway, we're laying the bikes over here. We're gonna hike up over this top, drop down, and there's there's a finger at the place that we were at earlier that we were looking at. There's a finger that drops off down into the bottom and uh, there's a double stand there, so we're going to get set up. Ethan's going to be the cameraman. Back side of the stand, I'll be in the ladder stand. Hopefully we can kill a buck. There's three, I think they said three different big old mature bully bucks in here. Um, just big old bully eight points and a uh, bunch of does. So we're going to do some work on some does hopefully and hopefully shoot a big old mature buck. Consistent. 10, 12 mile an hour wind. That's perfect, that is exactly what we want. It's October 17th, still the first day out here in Georgia. We did a lot of scouting today, helping Tyler look for uh, some sign in different areas to be able to hang and hunt the deer that he's hunting, so. Uh, did some scouting, did some shooting with the bow, just hung out at camp, had a good time. And now we're out here in the evening. Looking forward to it, should be a good sit.
Saw a couple does, saw a button buck, saw some turkeys. No big bucks tonight, so we're gonna head back to the e-bikes, head back to uh, the truck, meet up with the boys, and go get some food. Morning, we are headed out. We're heading back to the exact same stand that we hunted yesterday morning. Yesterday evening, we hunted just above the ridge thinking that they might come up to that top field and wouldn't you know it we hear a couple of bucks sparring down below us right in front of the stand that we hunted yesterday morning we checked the camera sure enough two big eight points on that stand so we're going to go back out there and hunt the exact same setup this morning hopefully catch them slipping through there yeah should be a good morning climb out of the set. We had a couple of fawns and a spike buck and about 15 long beards come through. Nothing I wanted to shoot so we're gonna pack everything up, climb out of the stand and uh, we've got some work to do this afternoon during lunchtime and stuff like that. We're gonna shoot the bow, we're gonna film some content and then we'll be back out this evening. For now we're just packing things up and Gonna hop out of the stand, go grab some lunch, breakfast, brunch, go grab some brunch, get some work done, and we'll be back out tonight. Polaris. I was gonna say something witty, and I couldn't figure it out. Polaris. The hunters. Dang, you had like 30 seconds and you still couldn't figure <laughs> you it still out. Can't get it. <laughs> right, get in, we got deer to kill. Let's go. This is sick. A little white tail fit behind the scenes today. hanging there and that awesome. and that that forky came out of here and fed on acorns for like an hour and a half right in wow. front of us i mean you could push in i guess and do hanging hunt up in here but you're risking pushing them out of the bedding in the like for an evening hunt you're risking pushing them out of the bedding that would almost be better for like a morning hunt before mm -hmm. they get in mm -hmm. and like wait for them to come to bed right but if a guy came in here with their southeast southeast wind 
came in here, walked down this road to the to the point here, and got right off the creek somewhere right in here and hung and wait for him to come down. All right, guys, it's the evening hunt. We just rode the e-bikes down into this bottom. We're gonna go back in and hunt where we were this morning. Technically, if you look at the weather app, we have the wrong wind, but down here in these hollers, the wind is swirling and doing things different. We just came down here and we just checked our wind. We've got just the perfect wind for this set. We're gonna see if we can't get on this buck tonight. He was in here last night, big mature eight point. Hopefully we can do it, but we're gonna go in there. We're gonna hang this set, get right back in, get set up like we were this morning. Hopefully that buck comes in. We'll see. Here we go. Got this set hung pretty dang quick. Done it a couple times now, so I know exactly where everything's gonna go. Position my saddle over to the side just a little bit more. Um, I felt like this morning I was really kind of having to torque and look over my shoulder in order to see what was coming in, so I kind of got sideways to it. So I can watch over here and kind of keep this tree between me and any deer coming in from this way. So, um, anyway, we're all set up. The wind is like super inconsistent, it's pretty swirly where we're at right now. What advantage to rattling? with this wind, if we do have like somewhat of a marginal wind and we rattle, those bucks are gonna try to come in downwind to check out what they just heard. desirable 
<laughs> oh man. But they all had a great set. Everybody saw deer. He was awesome. Brother so. and him had been going for a year or two and he finally talked me into going. Yeah. And that field is probably the most shed producing field on the farm. All right. So we're heading out for the evening hunt. We actually had on one of the cell cameras, we had one of our shooters, not the shooter that we had in there last night, but another one of the big eights, showed up on camera 20 yards from that stand that we sat yesterday evening at like 9.45 in the morning. So I was gonna go in there and move that set, but now that we have that picture of that deer, I mean, broad daylight right in front of the stand, um, I have a hard time moving it because if we move it deeper into the woods, our shot selection is going to be way lower and we're going to cause a little bit of intrusion by moving that set. So we decided to just leave the set where it's at, give it another try tonight, and then we'll make a decision whether we want to move the set for tomorrow. But or just go to a different spot. There's there's a couple other spots we can try that we haven't even checked out. We've just got these deer in this bottom like consistent enough that it's worth it to continue hunting them in that bottom. We haven't really blown them out. They seem to keep coming in and they're loving the acorns down there on that ridge where the ridge drops off into the bottom. They've been feeding on those acorns every single day. So that's the plan. Go in there, hunt tonight. Hopefully one of those big bucks come in show themselves and we can get a shot at them. We'll see. We found a big scrape about 15 minutes ago. Where? Probably about between, 100, 100 yards off the road. Between the cornfield and that stand in the bottom he's got. Finish the field tonight. If there's any time to do it, it's now on that day. Yeah, yeah. I think this, today. All this cl these clouds coming in and rain coming tonight. Today and tomorrow. Yep. You got it, man. So good luck. You Thanks, you too. Me. We'll see you.
stand real quiet. We had three does feeding below us at like 20 yards, well past dark, so we had to just wait, wait, wait. And eventually they moved off on their own. That big buck was right behind us, like 25, 26 yards making a scrape. Ethan could see his vitals and stuff from his stand, but from where I was at, all I could see was his legs, because I'm slightly lower than where Ethan's at, and I had a big branch right across where his vitals were. I just had no shot whatsoever. And then he worked his way out and pushed a couple does down in that acorn bottom, right where we were thinking about moving that stand to. So our assumption was right that we probably need to move that stand. We're gonna probably go in here tomorrow morning hunt that spot I might bring a pole saw in and cut that branch to that scrape so that if he hits that scrape on his way back to bed tomorrow morning we can shoot him there but if not um, we'll pull that set after the morning hunt if we don't kill him maybe we kill him tomorrow morning but we'll pull that set out of the morning hunt and uh, move it into that acorn bottom just 50 60 yards is all we're gonna move the stand but that's right where all those deer wanted to be we saw so many deer tonight all right, sounds good. All right, bye. They're coming in this bottom road. We can start pushing the bikes that way. Said they got a doe on the back when nice. they shot it. So, anyway. Let's go. We'll see y'all tomorrow Let's morning. go with the doe. <laughs> yeah, you, you got to fix that one, Eddie. Cool. I got to find my headlamp. I have no idea where that thing went, but... I've got another one if you need that. All right, we're headed out for the morning hunt. We just got everything loaded up, grab the pole saw, because we're gonna be moving this tree stand once we get down there. You know what, let's grab one more set of sticks here. Throw those in the back. bunch of rain ever since this morning ever since we came in it's been kind of drizzling and the rain has kind of slowly picked up but I think it's supposed to pass here in the next 30 40 minutes and hopefully when that happens these deer will get on their feet we came in and did some trimming on this tree behind us we had that buck making a scrape yesterday uh, right here at like 25 yards and I had no shot because of this limb back here, so we brought the pole saw in and took this limb down. Definitely have a better opportunity to shoot to that scrape. We're just waiting for this rain to pass, these deer to start moving. Once we get down out of this set, if we don't kill him this morning, we'll have plenty of nice cover. The, the ground is all nice and soft now with this rain to be able to take this stand out, move over 50, 60 yards and uh, get set up on that acorn bottom right where that buck came through last night. We'll get these stands set up and be ready for the evening hunt. Should be good once this rain passes. Hopefully these deer will start moving.
Dolphins were too skittish to shoot. They were just like, that was the only calm doe, and it was the oldest, biggest, mature doe. Didn't have any fawns with it. These other ones had fawns with them. We just smoked a big old mature doe right here, 25 yards. First kill with the brand new Hoyt RX-8. This bow is sweet. The draw cycle is so money. Back wall holds like rock solid. Just, man, awesome. She ran for about 20 yards and then slowed up. Got to the creek bed and tipped over at the creek bed. So all the other deer that were in here kind of, they kind of bounced out, but then they all just slowed down and started milling around. They didn't even know what happened. I knew I could get away with shooting that doe real stealthy. Like I say, we're hunting a couple of big bucks in here, but um, we're on real tree farms and they'd like to do some doe management out here. And I got plenty of doe tags in my pocket, so decided to go ahead and take a big old mature doe right here and help out with that management plan. About a half hour, we're gonna pull this set out and move this set further into the acorns, but we've got the side-by-side -side with us down here on the road. So we're gonna go back there, grab the side-by-side, -side, go find this doe, load her up, and then we'll move this set for the evening hunt. Getting to shoot a brand new unreleased Hoyt on real tree farms. Did you ever think you were going to be able to do that? No. <laughs> Thank you guys for the support. The just, I wouldn't be where I'm at with this channel, with this brand, if it wasn't for you guys' support. I never thought in a million years working construction that I'd be able to partner with my absolute favorite bow company that I've shot for over a decade and not only partner with them, but be able to test out these brand new bows and uh, shoot them before they're even released. I mean, it's just, it's the coolest thing in the world. And then on top of that, coming out and hunting real tree farms with Tyler Jordan. I mean, I was watching Tyler on videos, on the Monster Bucks videos, when, you know, we were just kids. Tyler and I are pretty much the same age. and. I just really related to them in the videos and being able to be here on real tree farms where I've watched all those videos of Tyler taking his deer, his first deer, and it's just cool, man. It's surreal. Very blessed, very thankful. God is good. Great blood right here. Just a beautiful mature doe. Shot her this morning right here at 25 yards, and uh, she ran 40 yards and piled up right here at the creek. So, just perfect shot right behind the shoulder couldn't get any better so stoked to have some have some meat in camp and and get a rep through this brand new Hoyt RX-8 it's just man what a blessing to be out here hunting dude having a cooler like that would be awesome we're gonna get into trouble on it. Hey, just don't get in a tight spot because you gotta have about three football fields <laughs> turning around. <laughs> I was say. We got, right, the, we'll go kill him. we got the limousine and buggies right here. Yeah, it's a little bumpy. We're headed into the stand for this evening, the new set that we just hung. 
we got the dough all taken care of, got ourselves some food, uh, got a little bit of work done, and now we're headed back to the stand. So excited about it. Here we go. Going to an all new spot. This is a spot that we checked out when we first got here, the first day that we got here. And we haven't hunted it yet because we've had those bucks in those bottoms so consistently. Well, we decided with moving that set to give it a little bit of time down in that bottom, let those deer kind of get used to things being moved around and, and any kind of intrusion that we have put in that bottom. So we're gonna go try a different spot this evening do a hanging hunt, we got the saddle, we got the elevate stand, we're gonna go down into a new acorn bottom and uh, see what we can't find in there. There should be a couple of other big mature eight points down there that we wanna kill, so taking the ranger down, gonna go hang this set, hop in the tree. Gosh, you think, you'd think we were at a real tree farm. Real tree farms. Real, real tree. Real tree farms.
sitting on another oak flat, but this time we're on the top of a ridge, and we've got rubs all around us. We've got a big rub line right in front of us here. Um, there's a couple scrapes down here as well. It is just dead calm. It is so quiet in these woods, but we got all set up. Ethan's in the elevate stand. I'm in the tethered saddle, and we're waiting to see what comes through. Hopefully, one of these big old mature eight points. There's several of them on this property, so hopefully we're in a good spot and we can get it done, get a shot, make it happen. Armadillos are funny, man. Like armadillos. armadillos don't do give a dang. Coming down south, I didn't really know what to expect, especially hunting a piece like this. Just gorgeous piece, manicured. Just an awesome, awesome piece of ground, and it's still hard to kill bucks. I mean, we've been close multiple evenings. We've been hunting our butts off, and uh, we're just getting closer and closer and closer with each sit, but it's not easy out here. This is as hard or harder than killing a deer in the Midwest, probably harder. I mean, these deer are extremely flighty. Um, they're hard to predict. There's so many acorns on this property. They're really hard to predict where they're gonna be feeding, where they're gonna be bedding to and from travel routes. A lot of that stuff in the Midwest is easier to map out out here when you've just got so many big blocks of woods with acorns in it. It's hard to really figure out and narrow down where these bucks are gonna be, but we're trying our best. We're getting out here. Hopefully we can kill one of these big bucks tonight. Who's the shooter? Hey Briggs. Hey. So it wasn't too far off, huh? Nah, nah, it wasn't too good. I was holding it. Holding it. 
Big old doe? Monster. Monster doe, that's what I like to hear. Dang, big old suckers. Holy crap. That's the Midwest doe right there. Yeah, that was a big doe. Yeah. This one was very weary. All of them. Yeah. And welcome to Real Tree Farm. <laughs> well, the other ones weren't that bad, but it was this one. I was like, all right, you're the one who's got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Got all spooked, bounced out, came back out, looked towards the protein fear, spooked, bounced out. Our wind's not even. Like, Dude, this place, not even the same. This place, I was, uh, I went and, so when, when they were combining over there, I decided to go to the property. Well, where you saw the red line. Yeah. So there's that field. Yeah. You know where that yep. field is in there? Yeah. So yeah. that field. Yep. Yep, so I, I came in from this way, mm -hmm. seeing if there were some does in there. There were seven does and a, a nice, probably three and a half year old bug. And uh, as soon as I tried to get it, but anyway, he came to the, there's a feeder on that, on my end. Uh-huh. And man, he like, like he never seen it before. Checking it out, checking it out. He's been hitting it so every night, just, probably. Well, every night. <laughs> so just when I try to get like position, move to the right just a little bit on that road, he freaking checks up. There's seven does behind him. I was like, no way. He'd been out there checking the does up the whole night. And yeah. then as soon as he saw me, he took off and took took them with him. <laughs> Were you just sitting on the ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Red rod. Need a rod. What's your confidence level for tonight? At a hundred, because it has to be at a hundred. We're pushed up against the end of the trip. What do we know? We found them though. We saw one spike buck, and we went down that ridge and scouted down on the back side of the ridge where that drainage meets the creek and there's like that push road that 
that timber road mm -hmm. that somebody pushed out there. Dude, right in there. I mean, rubs on trees like that, shredded. Huge active scrape. Like, they just hit it mm -hmm. last night. Acorns everywhere, tracks everywhere. guys we are uh, just about to pack up the stands head down the tree and get back to the truck pack up and get ready to go to Missouri this was our last morning sit in Georgia we had a spike buck come through and then we had a doe slip in behind us that we didn't see till she was right on top of us and um, she ended up heading out and didn't give us a shot so anyway that's it for Georgia, at least first leg of Georgia. I don't know, we might come back this this late season. We'll see. We'll see what, this, what the travel schedule looks like, but for now we're going to head to Missouri. So we're going to pack everything up, head back to the trucks, start the drive to Missouri. We've got about 13, 14 hour drive and should be getting to Missouri sometime it's Wednesday today, sometime Thursday midday-ish. Hopefully be able to hunt Thursday evening. If not, we're going to start hunting Friday morning in Missouri. So uh, super, super fun time out here in, in Georgia at Realtree Farms. The South is something special. It's everyone is so kind and just so welcoming and just awesome people out here. The deer hunting's hard. Um, no two ways about it. I mean, you can be on some of the best farms in Georgia and it's still tough. We're out here at Realtree Farms and there's like five different shooters that we've been after this week and haven't been able to close the distance on any of them. In fact, everyone at camp has been kind of getting skunked. We've only been able to shoot does this week. Um, all the big bucks haven't been moving too much. So anyway, that's it for Realtree. That's it for Georgia. We're heading to Missouri. Appreciate you guys hanging with us. Literally, hanging hunts. That's We're about to head out. Joke I've ever heard. You like that? No. I mean, come on. No. 
Thanks for hanging with us in our hanging hoods. Thanks for hanging, guys.